In our lifetime, we have all established a identity, how we think about ourselves, and that's been developed through our environment, uh, what we've been exposed to, what we've been taught, how we've been raised. And personally, I was raised in St. Louis by a uh, middle class family back in the 50s and the 60s. And my dad, he was a hardworking man that worked all his life in a factory. My mom was a housewife that made sure that her family was provided all of their needs. And so I grew up back in those days and those times with the Midwestern conservative, conservative values. And I came from a good family. Um, the, the, uh, my family established a good solid foundation. We weren't particularly a religious family, although my dad and my mom both came from a religious background, but they taught us children Christian values that we are to respect everybody and be kind to one another. But in spite of those values that I've been taught, there is some negative uh, ways that I've been affected by living in this fallen world. And to give you an example of that in my own personal life, for various reasons that I won't go into, I was driven to perform to be recognized, to be recognized by my achievements. And I've been driven by that all my adult life. And um, so when I can't meet that standard of performing or not be recognized because of my performance, it affects me in a very negative way and I start getting these thoughts which are basically attacks from the enemy that I'll never amount to anything or I'm too stupid or nobody cares for me and that line of thinking continues to drag me down and so that I lose my self-confidence and it affects me in a very negative, a negative way. And so that is just one way that I've been affected uh, mentally and emotionally by living, living in this fallen world. Now, I know that everyone is affected differently. And so what I've gone through and how I identify myself is not going to be the same as probably it is for you. But we all have been affected in a very negative way, mentally and emotionally, by living in this falling world. Because we think like the world. We feel like the world. And so the world's values has established our identity. And it's a false identity. Um, I'm identified, again, by my performance. I'm driven by that. <clears throat> And so when I do not, again, are, is recognized for my performance, then again, that's those, those negative thoughts really start tearing me down. So I'm personally identified by my performance. There's others that may be identified by their past, that they're living in a time now where they're experiencing a lot of trauma or unhappiness or they're going through a divorce or whatever and they're always thinking about their past you know and what things were like in the past so they're identified by their past there's some that's identified by their guilt of the past so they can't get over that guilt they have of something they did in the past so they're identified by their guilt there are some that's received a lot of rejection and hurt over a lifespan. And so they think of themselves as being worthless, and that's how they identify themselves. They're not worth anything. 
And then there's some that are constantly being pat on the back because of their uh, skills or intelligence. And so that has identified them that they're on top of the food chain. It's that pride that drives them for that identity uh, that they have in this world. So all of those identif identifications that we have established in our lifetime, those are false identities, brothers and sisters. That's not who we are. Um, and so if we continue to live out those false identities, then we'll never experience the freedom that Christ wants to, for us to have. We'll never experience the abundant life that Christ wants us to have. Over time, I started to establish a new identity through the truths that were in God's Word. But this time, the identity I established was not of the world, but it was in Christ. At the age of 15, I made a step of faith to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I believed what the Word said in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so those who believe will not perish but have everlasting life. I made that step of faith to accept the sacrifice for my sins on that cross. And at that very moment, I received a new identity. Now, I didn't live out that new identity. Um, it was really not a part of my life at all. And I continued to live out my life. I was still identified by, driven by performance. And uh, other than accepting and receiving that gift of eternal life, that didn't do much for my everyday life at that particular point. Um, and then at an age of about 32, I seen God's hand start working in my life, and there was a miraculous physical healing that took place. And at that time, I knew that God wanted to be a part of my life. And right after that, I started receiving some teachings there at Temple Baptist Church that taught me that there was going to have to be a response on my part for me to be a part of God's, God's life, allow Him to be a part of my, my life. And I believe the truth that came from God's Word in Romans 12, 1, where it says, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable, and which is your reasonable service of worship. At that point, I turned my life over to Christ to be the Lord of my life, uh, to be directed by the Lord. And that was, a, that was a, um, a very important time in my spiritual growth because I seen the Holy Spirit start moving and directing and teaching things and revealing things in my life. But still, that urge to perform and to be driven by that performance was, was still there. Um, and so it was kind of a back and forth thing that I was constantly fighting uh, to, uh, to, to get myself in a position where Christ was changing my thoughts in the way that I felt. And then in my late 50s, I began to really understand who I truly was and how I was identified by what Christ did for me on the cross. I got involved in an organization called Freedom in Christ. And I believed another truth that came from God's Word, which is 1 John 3, 1. How great a love that God has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God, and that's who we are. Now, that truth wasn't just an intellectual acknowledgement that I am 
God's child and he is my father. But that truth sunk deep into my soul and my heart. And it started to change the way I thought. It started to change the way I felt. And I was starting to um, develop a new identity that was in Christ. <clears throat> and that, again, changed a lot of things about my life when I started to accept that new identity that Christ has given me. Now let's look at 2 Corinthians 5.17 for a minute. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Jesus' death on the cross provided us this a new identity where all things become new. We start thinking differently. We start feeling differently. We take on that identity that Christ has provided for us on the cross. And because we have learned these uh, false identities for so many years, it really takes a while for that truth to really uh, sink into your heart and soul where it starts making it different in your life. When I taught freedom in Christ, one of the things that I would have my students do is go over this card that uh, Dr. Neil Anderson from Freedom in Christ put together. And what this card does, it takes the truths of God's Word and it personalizes those truths so they apply to you and so that it can start to making that change in your life and what I'd like to do is I would like to go ahead and read through these uh, truths uh, and uh, um, to allow you to understand by personalize this that these truths are talking about you Okay, who I am in Christ. These first truths are about I am accepted. John 1, 12. I am God's tw child. John 15, 15. I am Christ's friend. Romans 5, 1. I have been justified. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. I am united with the Lord, one spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 I am bought with a price. I belong to God. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 I am a member of Christ's body. Ephesians 1, 1 I am a saint. Ephesians 1, 5 I have been adopted as God's child. Ephesians 2, 18 I have access to God through the Holy Spirit. Galatians 1.14, I have been redeemed and forgiven. Galatians 2.10, I am complete in Christ. Now these next truths are concerning that I am secure in Christ. Romans 8.1.2, I am free forever from condemnation. Romans 8.28, I am assured all works together for good. Romans 8, 31 to 34, I am free from any charge against me. Romans 8, 35 to 39, I cannot be separated from the love of God. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 to 22, I am established, anointed, and sealed by God. Colossians 3, 3, I'm hidden with Christ in God. Philippians 1, 6, I am confident that the good work God has begun in me will be perfected. Philippians 3.20, I am a citizen of heaven. 2 Timothy 1.7, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Hebrews 4.16, I can find grace and mercy in time of need. 1 John 5.18, I am born of God, the evil one cannot touch me. 
This next list of truths is about my significance in Christ. Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 14. I am the salt and the light of the earth. John 15, 1, 5. I am a branch of the true vine, a channel of his life. John 15, 16. I have been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. Acts 1, 8. I am a personal witness of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. I am God's temple. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. I am a minister of reconciliation for God. 2 Corinthians 6, 1. I am God's co-worker. Ephesians 2, 6. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. Ephesians 2.10, I am God's workmanship. Ephesians 3.12, I may approach God with freedom and confidence. And then Roman, uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I'm teaching freedom in Christ, uh, I have them go through that list daily and just read it out loud. And it amazes me the transformation that takes, people's, uh, takes place in people's life when they commit themselves to do that. I can even see the change in their eyes and their faces when they realize who they are truly in, in Christ. And uh, it, it makes a huge difference. <clears throat> now, this new identity that Christ has provided us is something that is not achieved. It's something that I can't earn. And for someone who is driven by performance, that was a huge awakening to me. This is something that Christ did for me. He gave me this identity by what he did for me on the cross. It's nothing that I, I achieved. It's who I am because I put my faith in Christ. And I believe that He is my Savior and that He is my Lord. And because of that, this new identity has been given to me. Um, and I know that type of faith is far-reaching because of the false identities that we've taken on for over years and years and years. That again, it takes something extraordinary to finally get us to believe that who we are through these truths that we just read through that card. But once we start believing it, and once we start putting our faith in who God really tells us who we are in Christ, that releases the Holy Spirit to put those truths deep into our heart and into our soul. Let's read... Romans 8, 16. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. Once the Holy Spirit starts to work in my mind, in our hearts, in our soul, to really understand who we are in Christ, that really starts to change things. It changes the way we think. It changes the way we feel. It changes our behavior and our attitude. One of the things that I learned from Freedom in Christ that's so true is that we cannot behave in any other way than how we perceive ourselves. So if I perceive myself as worthless, I'm going to act worthless. I'm going to have an attitude of being somebody that is worthless. If I see myself as a sinner, what am I going to do? I'm going to sin. If I see myself as a child of God, then I'm going to seek out Christ's righteousness. Knowing who we are in Christ provides us a weapon that we can use in that battle for our mind. When we are starting to be attacked by the enemy, getting those toxic thoughts about, uh, you're so stupid, you're nobody, 
Nobody cares for you. Uh, how can you do that? Those kind of thoughts that are coming, I now, with the truths that Christ is providing me through his word, I can stand up to those false allegations by saying, no, no, I'm not going to accept that because this who is who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm victorious. I have freedom in Christ. And once I can use those truths against those attacks on my mind, those changes those thoughts and it changes those emotions immediately. Uh, now, it's, instead of living out the emotional and mental damage that is done into our lives, now we can live out the potential Christ has for us by that renewed mind and that renewed emotions that Christ can give us. Even our physical appearance changes when we start to accept who we are in Christ. Now the light and the love of Christ comes through our face, comes through our eyes uh, when we understand who we are in Christ. So the big questions, brothers and sisters, is who are you? Are you getting your identity from the world and from your past? Or are you getting your identity through Christ and what he did for you on the cross? As a Christian, as a believer, as a child of God, you have a choice. You can continue to live out that false identity that's been provided through the world, or you can live out that new identity that you have in Christ.